Weldments. Design a weldment structure as a single part, then create a drawing. In this tutorial, we'll create the weldment structure shown here. We'll use the structural member command, trim and extend, end caps, gussets, and weld beads. In a separate tutorial, we'll create this drawing. To begin, click here to open the file. This file already contains 2D and 3D sketches required to create structural members. Save the file as My Weldment. To display the weldment tools needed for this tutorial, right click on the Command Manager tabs and select Weldments. First we'll create the four structural members that you see here. Select the Structural Member command. When you do this, a feature called Weldment gets added to the feature history. When this feature is present, this enables the Weldment's environment, which has the following effects. When creating extrusions, the Merge Result checkbox will be cleared by default. The Solid Bodies folder is renamed to Cut List. And also, the feature itself is a placeholder for custom properties. Turn on the push pin and select ISO, Square Tubing, 30 by 30. Then select these four entities. Select End Miter for the corner treatment and zoom in on one of the corners. If you like, test other corner treatments. We'll use the same square tubing to create these four structural members. Within the same structural member command, select New Group. Then select these four parallel line entities. As long as the lines are sequential, like this group, or parallel, like this group, they can be part of one group. Try selecting this line. It cannot be added to our current group. The last group of square profiles will be this group. Right click in an open area and select Create New Group. Then select these four line entities in this order. And apply an end but one corner treatment. Zoom in on the top right corner. We will manually edit this corner to make it look more like this, where we have a weld gap here, and this tube gets trimmed. Select the magenta dot in the corner, set group 1 to the second priority, and group 2 to the first priority. Now group 1 gets trimmed because it's lower in the priority list. Set it to end but 2, and turn on set corner specific weld gaps, and key in 3 millimeter then click OK. Repeat these steps for the bottom left corner. Click OK to the Structural Member command. Expand the Feature Flyout and see a new feature was added to our tree and also the Solid Bodies folder says Cut List and it contains organized groups of our structural members. Now we'll place a rectangular tube on this diagonal. Select ISO as the standard, use rectangular tube this time, and select 50 by 30. Select the diagonal sketch entity, rotate to a right view, and zoom in on one of the ends. Rotate the profile 90 degrees and click OK. Reorient to a trimetric. Now we'll need to manually trim that diagonal tube. Hit the red X on the structural member command and select trim slash extend. Turn on the push pin under corner type, make sure End Trim is selected. And for the body to be trimmed, select the diagonal rectangular tube. For the trimming boundary, we'll use a face. Select this side face. By default, it will discard the smaller body, in this case on the left of the side face. Select the side face on the opposite side of the model and click OK.
Now we'll trim the upper left corner to look like this. For the bodies to be trimmed, select the two horizontal tubes. And for the trimming boundary, select these two faces. Then click OK. Next we'll extend this body. We'll define it as the body to be trimmed with allow extension turned on. Then for the trimming boundary, we'll select this face and then click OK. We'll repeat these same steps for the lower right corner as well. Trim these two bodies using these two faces. Then extend this body to this face. Once you're finished, hit the red X and reorient to a trimetric view. Now let's save our work. Now we'll add some end caps to all four of these open corners. Select end cap, turn on the push pin, and select these two top faces. Set the thickness direction to inward and key in 3 for the thickness. Use a thickness ratio for the offset of 0 0.5. Turn on corner treatment and add a chamfer of 3 millimeter and click OK. Repeat these steps for the other two corners. Then click on the red X to close the property manager. We'll add some gussets to the mitered corners. Return to a trimetric view. Select the gusset tool and turn on the push pin once again. For the supporting faces, select these two faces. Use a triangular profile and set D1 and D2 to 50 millimeter. Select inner side with a gusset thickness of 5 and locate the profile at the midpoint and click OK. Repeat these steps for the other three corners. Then hit the red X. Now we'll add fillet weld beads. We'll return to a trimetric and start with the lower left corner. For this tutorial, we'll use the fillet bead tool instead of the weld bead tool. Select insert, weldments, fillet bead. Turn on the push pin. Under the arrow side heading, select full length. 3 millimeter, and for the faces, select this face for face set 1, and these two faces for face set 2. This tool finds the virtual edges of intersection between the face sets. Turn on other side, and we'll rotate the part to select the other side faces. Click OK, and you may repeat this procedure for the remaining welds. Once you are finished, hit the red X, return to a trimetric view, and save your model. 
Now we'll add a couple of rails to the bottom of the structure. Orient to a bottom view. Now we'll select one of the bottom faces for the sketch plane. This is difficult to do without zooming in. Or you can use the face filter by hitting the letter X as an X-ray on your keyboard one time. With the face filter enabled, select the bottom face. Then select sketch. Now we'll sketch and dimension a horizontal line like the one shown here. Begin with the line tool. And now add some dimensions. To take advantage of the symmetry in this model, we'll draw a center line. We'll connect the center line from midpoint to midpoint. I'll return to the select tool, select both the center line and the line that we drew in dimensioned, and select mirror entities. And now we can close the sketch. Now we'll place an 80 by 6 I-beam profile on the two lines we sketched. Return to a trimetric view. If your cursor looks like this, you may still have the face filter enabled. Tap the letter X one time on your keyboard, then move your cursor a little bit. Select the structural member command. Under the ISO standard, select SB beam, and then 80 by 6 for the size. Now select the two lines that we drew. Rotate to a right side view. And in the structural member settings, select locate profile. This profile already includes a sketch point we can use to reposition it. Select this top point and click OK. Once again, return to a trimetric view and save the model. Now we'll create a sub-weldment to group the back four structural members and their end caps together. Expand cut list in the feature manager tree. To see the full names of these cut list items, you may need to expand your tree like this. Now expand the third, fourth, and sixth groups in your tree. Select the bodies in these groups by holding down control and picking on them, and verify that it selects the four structural members and the respective end caps. Be careful because the numbers shown in this tree may be different, like mine. Now that these bodies are selected, right click on one of them and select Create Sub Weldment. A new cut list item folder is created that contains this sub weldment with the bodies grouped. Right click on the sub weldment 1 folder and select Insert into New Part. All eight bodies should appear in this list. Browse to a file path and type a name for the sub weldment part. Then click on Save and click OK. If you see this prompt, select Rebuild and Save. This sub weldment stays linked to the parent document. Close the file and save your main weldment structure. That completes the first part of this tutorial. In the second part, We'll take a look at a weldment drawing. Stay tuned for that one later. Thank you.